Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sanket Pisat, and we are discussing uh, case number two in our case-based discussions uh, in gynae endoscopy. So uh, I had posted this query in our WhatsApp group a couple of days ago, and I had posted an HSG film, and most of the people have uh, uh, attempted and given their answers. Again, as the standard disclaimer before we start with our uh, discussion. Medicine is not an exact science, and these are my personal opinions. They may be different from published evidence. But if you have any particular uh, argument that you think is contrary to what we are discussing, we would really love to hear from you. Please leave your views in the comment section below. These can be your views, uh, your comments, or even your doubts, and we'll be happy to discuss them in the group. As you know, this is a broadcast-only WhatsApp group, so as to avoid daily disturbances to everyone. Because of repeated discussions and messages, and if you have a difficult or interesting case, we'd really love to discuss it. Please send us the images or details on endogyne training at gmail dot com, and of course, due credit will be given to all the contributors. So this was the image which was actually posted in the group, and uh, we had asked, "What exactly do you think this is? This uterine anomaly is?" So let's see what most people have answered. uh this has been the nature of the answers that has been given so uh the commonest answer that has been selected by everyone is uh green 65.8% people have said that this is uterus didelphis then the second most common answer is bicornuate uterus which is at 21% and the third most common answer is a septate uterus which is 9% and all the others are uh, lower down in the list so once a patient comes to us with this particular uh, hsg let us try to analyze the hsg before we give her a diagnosis so this definitely does not look like a normal uterus so normal uterus is out of the picture it does not look like a unicornuate uterus because there are two horns which are seen so unicornuate uterus is also out uh, now also the indentation seems to be quite large so arcuate uterus is also not looking like a possibility so now the only four options that remain are the ones that all of you have selected which is bicornuate uterus didelphis septate uterus and this one is can't say for sure now if i were to pick one of the answers uh, the answer that i would pick for this particular case would be this one can't say for sure and there is a reason for this uh, let me explain to you in detail so this is an hsg film like the last case we again break it down into this is the ostium on one side this is the ostium on the other side and this would be the level of the internal os so this is the film that we are looking at so we can clearly see that there are two separate horns over here of the uterine cavity however uh, with these two horns it is uh, we do not we have the picture we obviously understand that this dye which is delineating the cavity is delineating the uterine cavity and this has got nothing to do with the external appearance of the uterus so in an hsg film per se without any other diagnostic uh, modality it is impossible to know what is the external contour of the uterus let us start with the assumption that this is a septate uterus so if it was a septate uterus the external contour of the uterus would be like this this way and this way probably and this would be the external contour of the uterus however if one were to argue that no this is not a septate uterus this is a bicornuate uterus or a didelphis uterus didelphic uterus the external contour of the uterus would be like this but in an hsg film it is practically impossible to tell what the external contour of the uterus is and hence an hsg film by itself is insufficient information to tell us whether this is a septate or a bicornuate or a didelphic uterus and hence can't say for sure would be the correct answer in this case now the com point comes to how exactly does one then uh, differentiate between these three entities of septate bicornuate or didelphis uterus 
and the answer is you require a modality that tells you what is the external contour of the fundus and that external contour of the fundus simply can be either a dipping down contour like this or it can be a straight contour like this in which case this would come as a septate uterus and this would fall into the category of bicornuate uterus and then of course if the horns are completely divided in the center like this that means there are two separate horns all the way down and two separate cervices maybe we could call it as a didelphic uterus but it is not possible to know this on hsg and hence the next investigation of choice which i deliberately did not put into the video would be a three dimensional ultrasound and on the three dimensional ultrasound alone it would be possible to make out what is the external contour of the uterus and then we can decide whether this is a septate or a bicornuate uterus there are also other criteria like angle between the horns uh, the splaying out or the widely placed horns and this we will discuss in another video as to exactly what are the presently internationally accepted criteria for diagnosis of a septate uterus versus a bicornuate uterus versus an acute uterus but uh, given only this much information that what is the uterine anomaly among all these options that have been given can't say for sure will be the correct option and this has a bearing during surgery because uh, one may assume that this is a septate uterus and directly post this patient for a septal incision but in case this is actually a bicornuate uterus then the if the level of the uh, fundus is like this and you start cutting from below at this point you will find that will be the last point and once you go a little beyond this you will have perforated the uterus at this particular point so that is not something that we want so whenever a patient comes to us with an hsg like this it is mandatory that we ask for a three dimensional ultrasound the only other alternative to a three dimensional ultrasound if one argues that the patient cannot afford it would be to do a simultaneous hysteroscopy plus a laparoscopy and do on doing a hysteroscopy plus a laparoscopy then one would be able to definitely find out whether the fundus is single or not and then the corrective subsequent surgery can be done accordingly so i hope this uh, this is amply clear and just to finish off we are going to look at what the 3d ultrasound of this exact patient looks like so this is the 3d ultrasound picture and if i were to break this down for you we can clearly see that this is one horn which was shown up in the hsg this is the other horn which was showing in the hsg these are the two side walls of the uterus the external muscular contour and look at this external muscular contour on top is only a very slight dip but for the most part it is smooth and round and therefore the diagnosis in this particular condition becomes a septate uterus now this surgery we have already done so i will try and post the youtube video of the actual surgery soon but the idea of the discussion is just to emphasize that uh, indentation seen on hsg cannot really be classified into a septate uterus or a bicornuate uterus or an acute uterus unless it is confirmed either by three dimensional ultrasound or by a concomitant laparoscopy done in the same setting so i think that's enough for today uh, i'll try and post the next question in uh, by tomorrow or day after so thank you so much and please uh, make sure to leave your comments and questions in the comments box below so that we have some feedback and we can solve any queries uh, if they are there so thank you so much for listening